This tutorial is going to cover adding an IKFK switch. In this scene currently I have um, set up IK and FK controls and I also have um, an, an original version of the skeleton with no controls on it currently. I originally did each of the FK and IK with the adjoining hand controls because if you just wanted to use IK and, or FK individually then you would still have them but we don't need them for this we just need them on the original skeleton so I'm just going to remove them by going to edit, unparent and then deleting and that's on my FK and then I'm just going to repeat the process on the IK and then if I turn the visibility back on of my original that has the hand bones. We want the IK and FK to both control the original skeleton. So in order to do this we're going to parent the original skeleton to both the IK and FK. Do that. I'm going to select the shoulder FK bone, shoulder IK and then the shoulder and go to constrain parent open the options box, make sure that maintain offset is turned off and hit apply. What we now have is the original bones trying to parent to both the FK and the IK so it ends up going into the centre. We now are going to repeat that process so I'm going to grab the elbow IK and FK and then the elbow bone, constrain parent, and then the same for the wrist. Wrist FK and IK, original wrist, constrain parent. So we now have the original being controlled by both IK and FK at one time. We're going to create a switch so that it's controlled by one or the other. We need to create a visible control for our animator that they can select to, to actually switch. So we're going to go into the top view, create, curve tools, EP curve tool. In the tool settings I just want to make sure I'm using linear. And using X to snap to the grid I'm going to draw a double arrow shape. When I've done that, I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to rename this L for left arm control. I need to position it somewhere near my wrist, so I'm going to center the pivot and snap to the wrist, rotate 90 degrees and then just position it so that it's accessible to my animator but also in a position that they know it's near to the wrist to control that. Modify freezer transformations. In the channel box we want to have a attribute that allows us to switch between IK and FK so we need to add that attribute as it doesn't come as standard and to add an attribute we go to modify add attributes and in this window we can give it a name that will be visible here so we're going to call this attribute ik underscore fk underscore switch and we want it to be a float which is a number value and the minimum number is going to be zero and the maximum is going to be one and then we will add that and you can see that now with my controller selected I have this IKFK switch here that I can select and blend between or go to zero or one. When this is set to zero I want to be able to use my FK controls and when it's set to one I want to be able to use IK so we now need to link this value to control which of these our original joint is using 
when it's parented. We can do this in the node editor. So if we go to Windows, node editor, this window allows us to load in nodes. So with my arm control selected, I'm going to use this little button here, which is the plus. I don't need the control shape, so I can remove it using the minus. And then if I press three on the keyboard, this is going to show me all of the attributes. And at the bottom, we have the IKFK switch, which is what we, what we need. And we need this to control the three parent constraints that we've just created. So in the outliner, on my original bones, I'm going to locate the parent constraints we added to the wrist, elbow and shoulder, and I'm going to add them into the node editor. And I'm just going to arrange them quickly so that we can see and press three to reveal their, their attributes. And on each of them, we have an FK and an IK uh, parent constraint value. So currently, my IK FK switch is set to zero. And when this is set to zero, I want my IK to be zero. So I don't want it to use the IK parent constraint. So I'm going to grab the IK FK switch and feed this value into the IK parent constraint. So now when I select this, this is set to zero. And I'm just going to repeat this for the others. All I'm doing here is clicking on this little green dot, holding down my mouse button, dragging and moving it to link to the IK and then letting go and it forms a connection. So when this is set to zero, it's going to take that value and say zero to the parent constraint of the IK, so don't use it. What we need is also to link this so that when this is set to zero, it's using the FK. If I were to take this and plug it into the FK, the FK and the IK are going to say zero. So it's not using either of the parent constraints to position the original bones. So I'm just going to remove that link. We need to use a utility node called reverse to take this zero value, reverse it to be one, and then plug that into the FK. So if to do that, we press tab and type reverse. Press three to reveal its attributes. And we're going to use the input X. We're going to take the IKFK switch, put it into the input X. So we're inputting a value of zero. And then we're going to output the reverse of that into the FK, which will be one. I'm going to do that for each of those. So now, when this is set to zero, our IK is zero and our FK is one. And when we change this to one, our IK becomes one and our FK becomes zero. And we can just test that. So currently, my IK is set so that it controls it, but the FK doesn't. So we've set up the link between this attribute and which of the controls controls the arm. We also can use this attribute to determine whether which of the controls are visible. So that when we are, have it set, our animator knows which ones they need to use. So I'm going to take the FK control offset group, which contains all of the controllers for our animator for the FK, and load it in, and press 3. And we can see here that we have visibility. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the output from the uh, reverse node, which is controlling our FK, and plug that into the visibility of the FK. So when this is set to zero, uh, when this is set to one, we can't see the FK controls because our IK controls are working. 
and then we're going to do the same with the IK controls. We're going to take the IK handle offset group and our elbow pole vector, load those in. Don't need the pole vector shape. And then press three so that we can see each of their visibilities. And then I'm going to take direct from the IKFK switch into the visibility of each. So now, when we set this to zero, it not only switches which of the controls are being used, it switches out which of them we can view. So the animator can see the ones that you want them to animate. We currently can still see the bones for the I, K and F, K. So all I'm going to do is come in and hide those in the attribute editor by selecting the shoulder I, K and pressing H to hide. And the same for the F, K and pressing H to hide that. Because all we are interested in is the original bones going forward. Lastly, I'm just going to change the colour of this by going to um, the shape... Uh, tab on the attribute editor, object display, enable the drawing overrides and then choose a colour that's going to stand out for my animator and is different to the FK and IK controls.